Welcome to the Oasis. My name is Mike and today we're going to be talking about Oculus Go casting. Now yesterday we had an update from Oculus saying that it was rolling out casting to all its Oculus Go users. So finally we get to cast our Oculus Go footage to an external device and in this case it's going to be our mobile device. Now this is a long awaited feature and it's been something that I've been looking forward to getting my hands on and testing it for myself. So in today's video I'll show you how to get the casting application on your Oculus Go, how it sort of compares when you connect it to a 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi network to a 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi network and also a mobile hotspot and then how that quality compares over casting compared to recording natively to the headset itself and then finally what my conclusions are. So I hope you guys and girls enjoy this one and without further ado, let's dive in. Okay, so first things first is we want to get the casting application on our Oculus Go. Now I was able to push this update myself by powering on the headset and putting the device on charge for around 10 minutes. Whilst it was on charge, I made sure that the headset and my mobile device were on the same Wi-Fi network. Once that's all done, you can turn the headset off by pressing and holding the power button on the headset itself and then going into VR and then pressing uh, power off in the menu. Once you've restarted the device, you should find the casting application under sharing in the menu. Now, oddly enough, the version numbers of the Oculus software didn't change during this update. Very strange indeed. I don't know what kind of wizardry this is, but anyway, once it was up and running, it was super easy to cast. Like I say, just make sure you're on the same network and then go into the menu and press casting. You'll then get a notification on your mobile phone, which you then have to allow. And then once that happens, you'll see the display from your Oculus Go mirrored on your mobile device. You'll know that you've got everything up and running because you'll get a red icon whilst you're casting, just like if you were recording. The cool thing about casting though is you actually have to manually turn it off. Whereas with recording, sometimes if you push the menu button, it can automatically stop your recording. So that was cool that you have to manually stop the casting, which is a neat little feature. So to put the casting to the test, I tried a couple of different applications. I tried Face Your Fears, the spiders one. <laughs> I relived it for you guys and girls. And also Thumper, because Thumper pushed an update today as well. And now they support full gamepad support. So I thought it'd be an ideal opportunity to go and test that out as well, which is awesome, by the way. Uh, so in this uh, comparison, I'll show you what the footage is like uh, casting over 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi, uh, what the casting is like casting over 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi, what the casting is like casting over a direct hotspot to your mobile phone, and then finally to show you the comparison between a native recording to the headset itself. If you're unsure of the speed of your Wi-Fi network, you can easily tell by going into the Oculus menu and going to Wi-Fi, selecting the Wi-Fi network you're connected to and then pressing on it. It will give you some more details about the network speed and it'll either be 2.4 gigahertz or five gigahertz. Obviously to get the best possible cast, you really wanna be connected to a five gigahertz Wi-Fi network. So using the casting will not cast any audio. It's just gonna be the image only. And also you're not gonna be able to cast all the applications. Some applications with video content, for example, will have licensing and copyright issues like Netflix, for example. So they won't let you cast that. And interestingly enough, when I tried to show you some of my Wi-Fi settings, how to sort of tell whether you're on a two gigahertz or a five gigahertz Wi-Fi setting, 
it wouldn't allow me to cast that either. So they've obviously got some privacy uh, settings embedded in it. So you just can't share that information. And when you do try to, either the screen freezes or it just goes completely black altogether. So if you want to experiment with live streaming your cast from your mobile device, you're still gonna need to contend with the audio because that's not included in the cast to your mobile device and isn't included to the recorded video file onto the headset itself. Now this has been a massive bugbear of mine ever since the Go launched and I put a video on how to get around it up here and how you can record with the Go. But to put it basically, you need to use the 3.5 mil jack out and use a cable splitter to split that audio. So one split will go to a pair of headphones and the second split will go to the PC, which you can stream or record or to a mobile recording device like a dictaphone or something like that. You just need to be aware that you need some sort of indicator within the audio somewhere. Uh, so if you're recording it, that you need to sync it up in post so everything is lined up afterwards. If you're live streaming, it's not going to be so much of an issue if you can get that function to work. But if you do experiment, I'd love to know your experiments in the comments down below. Okay, so let's talk about my thoughts about this casting option and who I think it's actually for. So I thought the uh, casting over 2.4 gigahertz was pretty choppy and you wouldn't really want to use it. Might be okay just if you want to know roughly what someone's doing in VR, but really for demos and stuff like that, you really want a solid five gigahertz connection. So in terms of the quality itself, would this be good enough quality for recording videos uh, or sort of live streaming? Well, live streaming possibly, but for recording videos for me, I don't think so. I think it could be better and I think the recording function is still going to be my go to for creating videos on my YouTube channel for you guys and girls. However, I do think this is perfect for people that are going to events, going to shows, uh, businesses that are demoing things to their clients, developers that are showing off builds of their game, uh, events and shows. And if you just wanna, wanna demo it to your friends and family so you can talk them through the menu system of a game, for example, and you can see exactly what they're doing. Is it for content creators like me? No, I don't think so, because right now, the only thing you can really do with it is cast it to your phone. Now you could always forward that to a live streaming service like YouTube or Twitch, uh, but it's still a bit clunky. What I'd just like to see from Oculus is some real live streaming functions embedded into the headset itself, such as YouTube integration, Twitch, and also some further Facebook integrations. Because interestingly, right now, the Oculus Go can only live stream to a personal Facebook page, which still baffles me to this day because someone like myself or a content creator or someone that's got like a, a gaming channel or a gaming Twitch channel that wants to stream on Facebook, for example, as a one-off type thing or a regular thing even, they want to stream to a managed Facebook page, a branded Facebook page, not their personal one to all their friends and family who are probably not interested in VR. They want to stream it to their dedicated VR or interested gaming audience. And I've actually tested this live stream feature directly to my personal page just as a test to see how it works. And the quality wasn't all that bad and does actually include the audio. Now, the great thing is you can actually get chat interaction in real time. So the messages actually turn up in Facebook uh, as little messages at the bottom and you can see who they're from and read them out, which is perfect. And we just need that for the other streaming platforms. So this is my other bugbear about the casting feature. It doesn't include any audio. So again, it's more for people that just wanna see what the user is up to rather than actually streaming it to a, a sort of hosted service. So it's not really for content creators, it's for people that just wanna demo it or show it to their friends and family. So I think it's a neat little feature. I'd love to see it expanded upon in the future. Hopefully, please, 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 please Oculus, don't make this the feature for the Oculus Quest. We really need a proper solution for A, recording, and B, live streaming to Facebook, YouTube, and Twitch for the Oculus Quest. This, quite simply, isn't gonna be good enough for the Quest, okay? Just putting that out there, because if the Quest launches with this set of features, um, it's just gonna be a disaster for content creators like me. So we need the audio, and we need decent video for live streaming and recording. You know what you need to do, Oculus. So there we have it, guys and girls. I'd love to know your thoughts in the comments down below. Have you tried out the casting? What do you think of it? Are you gonna be trying to live stream this onto other platforms? I'd love to know if you've got any tips or tricks that you've learned on the way. So there we have it. Leave a like if you like the video. Make sure you're subscribed for all my future content. And as always, I'll see you on the next one. Cheers.